Tyler, hey. what's up? Not too much. How are you? Good, nice good, to good to you. finally see you off a of Zoom know, here in Leipzig. So we're in a pretty interesting area. Yeah, yeah. Usually I meet footballers at the training ground, right. but we're getting artsy here with you, yeah, which yeah. is a, a, a hidden skill of yours, I hear. It's not so much a hidden skill of mine, but I grew up around art. My mom was actually an art major in school, and um, I've always been interested in art, and this is more the hipster vibe of Leipzig, so it's cool and nice to get outside, finally some nice weather, so I thought it would be cool to do it here. So we're gonna go see some art. Yeah, let's go. Let's go see some art, guys. So art now, I'm not an art connoisseur, I'm not going to yeah. lie. Uh -huh. I do love drawing though. <clears throat> I draw lots of anime, okay. which you probably won't see here. No, no, not here, not here. I don't but anime so. has its place, don't yeah. you worry about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, tell me about like the art and then I guess how you got into it. Yeah, so like I'm not an artist myself, but um, art in general, I've just been around since, since I was young. My mom, I remember going to the library with her while she was still trying to study and get her degree. And um, you know, our favorite Super thing mom. to do. Yeah, for <laughs> real, she was, she's wonderful. She's amazing. Everything that I have is because of her. And um, I just remember going to museums in, in, in the city, the Metro Metropolitan Art Museum, the Natural uh, History Museum, and just being around art and her having to study it for her degree. And um, I've just always had an interest in it. And finally, when I was able to make my own money and, and find the artwork that interested me the most and the artists that I love, I started buying art and, yeah. and, and not studying it, but really enjoying it and having it in my house. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I came into it. Now my dad loves art too, and we have like a, a bunch of good pieces back home in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. But I know he goes for certain type of pieces, obviously like our Caribbean, West Indian right, vibe pieces, right. things to make you feel at home. So for you, I mean, we've got a bunch of pieces here. Yeah. Which one like stands out and what do you, I suppose, gravitate to? Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm such a neutral, person but when it comes to art I love vivid colors things that mm. kind of pop and and give that feeling uh, this one over here I, I love you can with the smoke and the contrast of colors but this one here I love that big pops. things that just pop out at you uh, and in my house I have a few pieces of artwork that I can show you but um, I love how there's just like a random this. plastic chair too in the middle but it's, it's art that's what I'm saying that's it's that's what's art. art everyone can view it their own way that they want that's like the best thing about it you know and that's why I love it so much yeah, almost like this one too, the little abstract ones. Yeah, too. yeah, the abstract. The Picasso this looks like vibes. you can make it in your house with tape, but it's like. See, that's how I always feel too. You feel the, like you can make it in your house, and then you look at the price tag, and it's just like it, fifty grand. Exactly. <laughs> it seems like the, it seems like the best artwork you could make yourself, but you didn't. You didn't. So. You can never exactly. Yeah. So, how is your art collection? Now, do you have a majority of the pieces here or do you kind of keep them back home I have in some, New York? I have some at home in New York. I actually bought a house in Florida now as well that I have some pieces Not there. a bad place to be. No, not at all. <laughs> the warm weather, I'll take that any day. Um, but I have some, some here as well. I, I actually, um, a French artist that I, that I worked with, Manu Collage, um, he's built some, a few pieces for me and my family um, as well. And it's just kind of capturing the moments, the people that have significant impacts in my life. So I have one of Michael Jordan. He's a huge who's not, who, he, I mean, he's everyone's role model, I think. He's everyone's you know, he's the, he's the epitome of, yeah, of what the GOAT is. And um, I, that's a, a piece that really sticks out to me. I have a, a picture of um, the Joker as well. I love oh, the Joker. You can't, which one, which, who's your favorite Joker? Heath Ledger, has to oh, be, has same, to be. He's same. the best, no, no one can do it. No one can do it like he did. He was just like, so into the character, he, yeah. was, he was amazing. So um, you have that piece here or back in Florida? I have that piece here. Oh, we're gonna have here. to see that piece then. I have one more, but I can't think of which one it is right now. But that's I'll look, I'll look at what I'm holding, yeah. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough, I do love that. And I mean, when you went obviously from the scene, in, the art scene in New York, uh -huh. which obviously has different um, inspirations right. and, and stuff right. around the surroundings, to here in, in Germany, because yeah. I'm sure it's quite different, but still kind of the same. Like like I said, we're here in Leipzig and it feels very vibesy, it feels very yeah. hipstery, yeah, kind of yeah. colorful, which you probably don't expect. Absolutely. So when I first moved here, I actually lived in an apartment closer to the city and that was the more traditional part of Leipzig. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't really know what Leipzig had to offer yet. Um, when I got a better feel of my surroundings, I moved to a different place uh, after six months and that's where my girlfriend moved in with me is when my girlfriend moved in with me as well. And um, with her here, we adventured a little bit more and you, you get a, a huge hipster vibe here. And mm -hmm. I didn't think it was as multicultural here as as New York, of course, but um, through the graffiti and through the artwork and the different colors and stuff like that, I was quite surprised, to be honest with you. I love the graffiti, honestly. It's amazing. Perfect, so this is a room that everyone's told us that all of these pretty much are Leipzig inspired. Okay. So that's what I want to ask you about, because as an American coming here, we keep seeing more and more 
Americans coming over to Germany. Right, right. And as I was telling you, a good friend of mine is Leon Bailey. And okay. coming from yeah. Jamaica to Germany, he yeah. even talked a lot about how it took him a long time to get used to here, confined 100%. Jamaican food, 100%. got to get used to the weather. I know you're used to cold temps yeah, as well. Yeah. But what was what was it like for you settling? Yeah, fortunately for me, I think I had the easiest transition out of any American that's probably come to Germany so far. Um, being within the Red Bull system already in New York, mm. I was very familiar with a lot of the people that work internationally between both clubs. And um, when I settled down here in Leipzig, um, we had the American assistant coach as well, and Jesse Marsh. I had many conversations with Ralph Rangnick, who's you know now in Manchester and speaks perfect English. Yeah. So that was you know very welcoming for me to, to hear someone that's at the top of the club that, that already speaks English as well. And you know a lot of the older players made me feel very welcome. So um, I settled in really well. Uh, on the field, so I think that made the transition off the field much easier. And as you said, it kind of helps that it's got a, a vibe, a very yeah. brooklyn type vibe. Yeah. And I think for me, you know, growing up in New York, I was already in an area that's so diverse and around a lot of people. So I was already outside my comfort zone, always talking to new people and meeting yeah. new people. So when I came here, I'm a very social person. You know, I made friends quickly. Um, guys on the team that I'm really close with hanging out off the field. And yeah, the transition, I was just able to settle in quickly. Who's the first one that took you under your wing, brought you out, gave you the Leipzig treatment? Yeah, so actually it was a player, Ivan Mbogo. Um, mm. He's at PSV right now. He's, he's a goalkeeper there, but he's Swiss. And you know, my, my first thought when I moved to Germany is that everyone only speaks German. You know, you yeah. don't think when you're, when you don't live outside your country at all, uh, or living outside the US, you think, okay, I'm moving to Germany, everyone speaks just German. Um, mm. But I quickly learned that everyone obviously speaks, you know, really good English. And Ivan, being from Switzerland, he speaks four languages. He took me under his wing, took me out the first night I was here to eat. And, you know, it's a good feeling when, a, when another player, you know, comes up to you on the first day and, you know, they're willing to take you out and help you settle in. So that was nice. Well, you mentioned taking out to eat. The, the, the food can be a bit daunting, I must yeah, say, because we yeah. went out last night and we asked um, <laughs> we asked them, we're like, what's the specialty? What should I order here? Yeah. They were like, Schnitzel. Pork and knuckle. Yeah, no. Nah. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'll, I might give the knuckle a pass. Nah. But for you, especially <laughs> coming from such a melting pot that is like, you know, New York yeah. and Brooklyn, where if you want Italian, like proper Italian, yeah. you can get it. You want Latin food, you can get it. You exactly. want anything, you can get it. So <laughs> come in here. How's your, how your pork knuckle? No, nah, the, the food for me is, is the biggest struggle. The first thing when I'm back in the US, it's getting a home cooked meal for my mom or going to Chipotle or going to grab oh. something like this, you know? And then when I moved to Germany, it's just like, yeah, like schnitzel. With they're putting uh, you know grape jam on it and you know French fries and stuff. I'm just like this combination is not for me. So this is a no. The food I'll never get used to, to be honest with you. It's uh, I rather cook uh, at home myself. You cook? My girlfriend. Not not great, but I still rather cook myself than eat German food. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fact. No offense, it's Germany, a fact. but pork knuckles are a bit intense, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's not for me. It's and what about the fam me. getting them over? Is it like visit and stuff? Because you did say that your girlfriend yeah, even came to yeah. live here for a bit. That's a bold yeah. decision too. It was a it was a huge decision. That's some for serious her. trust, man. For real, for real. <laughs> I mean, uh, she just finished school and she had to make the decision whether to work in the U.S. or or make the move here. And um, you know, fortunately for us, she's an international business major, so it kind of fit the mm. fit the the mesh. And um, yeah, it was kind of difficult because my family hasn't been able to visit so much because of Corona. I've been here for now three and a half years and two and a half of those years have been Corona. So it's like the struggle of them having to travel back and, and forth with them yeah. working jobs as well. Um, it doesn't always balance out. And I have three other brothers that when they're in the U.S., they kind of get the treatment of, of the parents going to watch them play when my parents can turn on the TV and watch me. So, yeah, um, <laughs> no, nah, they're, they're always looking after me, though. I'm always talking to them on the phone. You know, we have such a close knit family. Um, I'm always talking to all of them. And as you said, it's the same thing now because I actually moved to, to London from yeah. the US in 2019, right yeah. before COVID hit. Honestly, right. I probably had four months to get used to London, which is huge. Yeah. And, and now I feel like I'm just finally starting to settle. What about you? Is this kind of finally feeling to start a little more like home? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely Home is always like, home though. Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel like I settled before Corona, which was, mm. which was good. Um, but then being trapped in the house for you know, two years and not being able to go out to restaurants and do the things that That's you enjoy, tough. especially during the nice weather when it's nice like this, it's like, oh, I can walk outside and do everything, but I can't go inside and, and grab something to eat or sit outside and yeah. drink a coffee, those kinds of things that, um, that you really want to do that you miss doing back at home. Um, but now I'm feeling at home, you know, me and my girlfriend are settled here and uh, it's nice. We have friends here, we have, you know, family come and visit, other friends from different European countries that come, um, so it's good, it's really good. Now you're going to have us come visit. That's fine with me. You guys are always welcome. <laughs> always welcome. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.